Here we have a wild Seamus out in the wilderness, leering at his prey, the Disney sequels. Particularly, he seems to have an eye on the Free Lilo and Stitch sequels today. The original seems to have abandoned them out in the wild, and at this point, it would be unwise to assume the prey has any chance of survival. It's the Disney Sequel Show! Welcome back! It's been a while. The last episode did really well, like 300,000 views? What? And I, as all smart business people would do in my position, decided not to ride the wave of success and tried some new things, dyeing my hair three times, and where did that bring me? Back to the Disney sequel. Salilo and Stitch, I'm assuming most people watching this video have seen it, coming out in 2002 during that weird era where 3D animation was starting to take over, with Pixar and DreamWorks making timeless classics year after year. Meanwhile, you had Disney over here, not doing so well, but also they kind of owned Pixar, so I doubt they really cared, but they hadn't quite given in to the peer pressure of making 3D animated movies yet, and I guess we're kind of taking the King George stance to animated movie fans of the world, you know. You'll be back soon, you'll see, you'll remember you belong to me. Is this video a musical now? And I don't know why, but a lot of animated films from this era look really weird to me. Like, the characters stand out too much, that they make the landscapes look flat. Like, are they using 3D models on 2D landscapes and... I don't know, can someone who knows a thing about animation explain this to me in the comments? I'm, I'm begging you. I just, I don't get why this looks weird, but am, am I the only one who thinks it looks weird? I really, just hell. Anyway, back to Lilo and Stitch, because while I made the assumption most of you are aware of the original, you might not know that they also made three sequels in the space of three years, making it four films in four years, a TV series in the middle of all of that, which is 65 episodes, and I found out too late this takes place bang in the middle of two of the films, but also is completely unrelated to the other film, which is just kinda there. It's like, hi, it's the odd one out. We'll get into that later, don't worry. An anime series, a Chinese animated series, a manga, I guess Lilo and Stitch is really popular in Asia, and also, surprise, surprise, they're working on a live action remake, but you can kind of ignore those last four things because today we're only going to be talking about the sequels. Please pray for me, I'm already tired. And with that said, let's get into the first sequel, which, just to clarify, when I say the first sequel, I mean the first in terms of release order because it came out a year after the original, but I think it's the third in the canonical timeline. And can you guys not see a problem with the fact there's a Lilo and Stitch canonical- Stitch the movie, forget about Lilo. Except for the fact she's got a pretty important part in this film and I don't know why her name's been taken out of the title, like, you gotta make it up to her. Make a Lilo movie. Except don't do that, because I don't know where it would go on the timeline, which is already confusing me enough. And can you not see a problem with this? There's a So to summarize this film very quickly, it looks like a weird animated Star Wars TV show on Disney Channel where an evil hamster alien mob lord wants to steal and bring the other 625 Stitch experiments to life, using them to take over the entire galaxy. And I watched it the entire way through. It wasn't that bad. I mean, if there were any unanswered questions to make a sequel around Jumper's other 625 experiments that came before Experiment 626 or Stitch would probably be the most interesting one, which is why I'm so surprised by the execution. Like, I'm just not 100% sold on the evil alien hamster mob lord. A sentence I never thought I'd say and somehow it isn't going to be the last time I'm going to say that sentence in my life. So the basis is that after Lilo and Stitch, Gantu, the evil angry whale alien, gets fired and the hamster sends him on a mission back to Earth to steal Jumba's other experiments. And he successfully steals one of them, 625, and kidnaps Jumba. So all in all, I would give that trip to Earth a 3 out of 10. Could've got worse. Meanwhile, Stitch has just done a complete U-turn since the first film as they do the all too familiar, well maybe happily ever after wasn't so happy after all. Because apparently Stitch just can't seem to fit in in Hawaii anymore and his Ohana from the first film isn't enough for him. Now, I guess? He wants a biological family or something. I feel like that's kind of the vibe it's going for and therefore you can kind of work out what direction it's going in. Stitch also wants to bring the experiments to life, but technically, if you want to get really philosophical about it, they aren't really blood related to him. They're just experiments made by the same scientist. Surely his only real biological relation is Jumba. And he was living with Jumba before this moment, so 
I don't know, the point is, the premise isn't great, and it doesn't really get much better from there either. Lilo and Stitch grab a quick Star Wars space battle, but Gantu and Jumba get away, so in an attempt to try and save him, they bring Experiment 221 to life by putting him in water, because that's how they come to life. Apparently it's easier if you don't think about it, and I don't know how to describe Experiment 221 other than... Electric type Stitch. They're all just Pokemon, which actually Experiment 625, which the evil alien Hamster Mob Lord and Gantu bring to life, is a four from Endgame type Stitch, I guess. Like, I don't know, he can be super powerful when he wants to be, but he's really just there to be laughed at, like, ha ha ha, lazy Stitch eats a lot. Anyway, so Lilo and Stitch spend the whole film looking for 221 because he ran away, which is actually probably the only part of the film I actively like. It's a fun little montage, there's a few funny moments in there, like when Lilo sees her friends in inverted commas and pulls this mad flex. Sunburn Ice Cream Man makes an appearance, and then, despite the fact 221 was pretty much indestructible before they capture him, Lilo manages to entrap him in a vase, where he just gets stuck, which Honestly, it makes sense. You know what they say about vases? They are indestructible. Matter of fact, I'm starting a challenge. Go find your closest vase and... Sorry about that. Hello? Oh. You, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. okay. Love you too. Thank you. Okay. Bye. 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 Yeah, I gotta cut this part out of the video. Anyway, back to the film. I don't really know what everyone else does during it, but they're there and something happens. This film has a plot, I can assure you. And it finally finishes with Cobra Bubbles arranging to meet the evil alien hamster mob lord to trade Jumba for all of his experiments, which I can't for the life of me work out how this was the compromise. You're just gonna let this evil alien hamster mob lord take over the entire universe with the experiments? Great, fine, okay, I'm just going with it then. And that could have been it. But Lilo, the one person with a working brain apparently, refuses to hand over the final experiment, or Sparky as she now calls him, which really infuriates the evil alien hamster mob lord because he wanted all 625 experiments and... Honestly, I never thought I could complain about something so minute in a film, but way too much is happening during the ending of this. The evil alien hamster mob lord threatens to kill Jumba because they're only handing over 623 experiments. Lilo sets Sparky and Stitch off to attack him. The government aliens from the first film were actually there this entire time with the plan to double cross and arrest the evil alien hamster mob lord, but Sparky stops them to save the other experiments. So then Lilo and Stitch get on the spaceship to steal the experiments back, throwing them out the window as they all rain down on Hawaii, and I really don't think that's how spaceships work, but... Again, we're just going with it. Conveniently, all of these experiments just about manage to not land in water, so don't activate any of the Stitches. Lilo and Stitch get thrown in jail with the evil alien Hamster Mob Lord's new plan to clone Stitch to make his army, but Experiment 221 also managed to get on the spaceship and save Stitch, and then they save Lilo from getting sent off to some alien zoo? I really just don't know how this ending went on for so long. And considering how uneventful so many sections of this film are, it is just staggering to me that they squeezed all of this into 20 minutes. Then in the end, just as the 623 experiments simultaneously fall into water and start to come to life at the same time, Lilo and Stitch set out on a mission to find and contain them all while Experiment 625 and Gantu crash land on Earth. And that's how it ends. A lovely cliffhanger. Which, to be fair, they're the first Disney sequel to do that, so for that, I'm gonna give it an average 3.5. It still wasn't good, even with the cliffhanger. I'm sorry. But fortunately, it perfectly leads into the series. I think, I haven't actually watched it, but I assume it's about them finding a home for the 625 experiments. And if you're wondering how does it lead into the next film, it doesn't. Lilo and Stitched 2. Are we really gonna do this again? Shameless complaints about the title. Stop calling the third movie in the series too! How many times are we gonna have to go through this before you understand? I get that this one is maybe the second film in the canonical timeline coming before the last one in the series, but it's not exactly made clear. As I said earlier, it's kind of just... There. And honestly, I can't think of an explanation to what's happened here, but if I was to place a guess, I think they've got one group of people working on the Stitch movie as a way to set up the Lilo and Stitch series. And then in the meantime, a completely separate group are working on the Lilo and Stitch 2, and they never cross-referenced what they were doing, nor made any references to each other. And long story short, we just ended up with two Lilo and Stitch 2s, and they must fight it out to the death to decide which one's canon, which, for the record, I choose this one. I mean, we're splitting hairs, and while I do think the first one had a better concept, to me, this one was more enjoyable, and I think that's the most important thing to judge a movie on, your enjoyment. But with that said, the concept and existence of the movie is stupid, and I'm ready to do my thing. Yeah, let's get into it. So you know how the original Lilo and Stitch opens with Jumba being arrested and tried in front of a council for creating Experiment 626? Well, apparently this arrest occurred while he was charging up Stitch's molecules and they never got to be fully charged up, meaning Stitch must die now. 
Or at least, he's gonna wait till the end of the film to die, but he does die. Spoilers. And while I think them showing this bit of backstory makes for interesting context to base a sequel around, it's just the fact it's never mentioned before or after this moment. Like, surely Jumbo would mention this while he's on trial since he's literally screaming it while they took him away, or I don't know, the fact he's been living with Stitch for God knows how long, why wouldn't this cross his mind? But no, Stitch starts glitching out and going evil again, and then, oh, so conveniently, Jumbo remembers he didn't fully charge his molecules and needs to create some sort of incubator machine to fix him. And also, just while we're talking about convenience, this film is filled to the rim with it because oh my does Stitch only glitch out when it's convenient to the plot. Like lilo has got to prepare a hula for this May Day festival and she's obviously doing one with Stitch and for the whole time they're planning out he doesn't glitch once convincing Lilo he's gonna be okay. But then the minute they have an important rehearsal he glitches badly. I mean he literally eats a chair. <laughs> Also, I'm so sorry, but the animation of this scene just gets me. Like, he doesn't even use his valve. He's just, like, moving back and forward in front of it, and the chair just disintegrates behind him. <laughs> I can't believe that made it into a Disney film. <laughs> And yeah, then the film just kind of becomes a back and forth of Stitch doing good deeds to try and prove he's still good, but glitching out the minute he's around Lilo until they eventually fall out and decide never to talk to each other again. And if you thought that was enough story for one movie, just wait until you hear about the subplot where David and Nani are fighting, so as all rational people do, David pretends he's dating Pleakley in a wig to make her jealous. Which, she knows it's Pleakley in a wig, and it's just really confusing. Like, yeah, this really happens, and to be honest, I just can't work out how anyone in Hawaii is convinced by Pleakley's disguises. He's so clearly an alien, but I guess I'm just gonna go with it. Subsequently, Jumba finishes the machine to save Stitch, only for the film to look at its metaphorical watch and say, oh, well, we're only 40 minutes in, so we're gonna have to stretch this out a bit, and the machine just breaks. Just a lovely big random explosion. Lilo and Stitch go through a classic learning to exist without each other while sad music plays portion of the film where, once again, Stitch doesn't glitch once. Finally leading into the May Festival, which Lilo is now prepared for on her own, including making this smoothie, which I'm only mentioning because... <laughs> You have outdone yourself there, animator. That is top tier comedy. You should be proud of yourself. And wait, actually, before we get into the final section of the film, let's play a game of guess what happens in this predictable Disney sequel, because just as Lilo's backstage about to start a hula, you'll never guess who comes out of hiding to wish her luck before glitching out and attacking her. Pleakley. Yeah, it's this really weird twist where Pleakley shows up out of nowhere and randomly just starts turning green and attacking. Okay, no. It's Stitch. Stitch shows up, he glitches out, he scratches her in the face, and then she goes out to do her performance and the scratches just disappear. Does her skin recover really quickly from scratches, or is this just a detail they looked over? Because my skin just... That's gonna be there for the rest of the video. Anyway, so Lilo doesn't really bother with her performance and abruptly runs after Stitch, who himself sets off on a spaceship to get as far away as possible before he dies, and this is where it gets really confusing. Because they all decide to chase him in a car. And they manage to keep up with him, despite the fact he's in a spaceship, and they're in, like, a regular car. Like, and they probably keep up with him until they reach a cliff, and then they get a hovercraft out of the boot of the car, which they just have, I guess, and Lilo chases after him, she finds him, crash landed in this mountain, so she puts him into Jumba's machine, but it's too late. Stitch dies. And it's a sad moment, but I'm too distracted by this film's lack of understanding for basic physics because apparently Jumba, Nani, David, and Pleakley managed to travel all the way up this mountain by foot! Then they're all kind of sad together and Stitch comes back to life. Somehow, I, I couldn't work out how- they don't explain it. He's all good now, because I guess this is one of those true love is the most powerful thing there is. You can't die if you love. Did you not know that? It's impossible. And with that, I would say this film was better than the last one. I mean, maybe better isn't right. It was more watchable than the last one. So for that reason, I'm gonna give it a 4.3 out of 10. And I was gonna give it a higher score, but there's a weird dream sequence in it where Stitch destroys Hawaii, and I was actively upset by it. Like, it just, you know the Summon ice cream guy? He actually gets to lick his ice cream, and I know it's just a dream sequence, but this is too far. I was rooting for you to be the canonical Lilo and Stitch 2, and we could have ended this video right here, but I guess we're gonna have to go on to the final one. Leroy and Sta Okay, seriously, what is this agenda against Lilo from the titles? Like, she is in these films, she is important to these films, why are they cutting her out the title? Anyway, so as I've kind of covered, this film is a follow-up to Stitch the movie, but I gather the series happens somewhere in the middle because it opens with Lilo, Stitch, Pleakley, and Jumba being honoured for capturing all of the experiments, turning them from bad to good, and finding them a home. That was kind of the cliffhanger the first film was left on, and while I have no intention of watching the series, I imagine that's where the missing storyline went down. And also, maybe I've missed some major character development from it, but 
apparently Stitch, Pleakley and Jumba don't want to live in Hawaii with Lilo anymore and all take new jobs offered to them by the Galactic Senate, or whatever this is. Which even if it did make sense with the context of the show, I don't like it, especially from Stitch. Bailing on your best friend like that? I swear, the disrespect Lilo gets in these films. We then reintroduce the Gantu and Experiment 625, who I guess Lilo never bothered to capture. I don't know if that's the right word. Help. She helps the Stitch Pokemon. And it looked like they just accepted coexisting together, but then Gantu leaves to go break the evil alien hamster mob lord out of prison because it just wouldn't be the film without him, would it? I'm still not 100% sold on the evil alien hamster mob lord, if I'm truly honest with you. That was the second time I said it. I I've said it more than once now. With that said, I've got to admit, the jailbreak is pretty epic. Gantu just dodging those laser blasts like it's the Star Wars TV show these films wish they were. And therefore, Stitch's first mission as Galactic Commander, I don't know, he's super important now, is to capture them. And capture is definitely the right word this time. He wants to end them. <laughs> Meanwhile, Lilo, back in Hawaii, is just out there looking after the other Stitches. We meet a few of them and they seem like they're living their best life. And my instant question is, okay, so has Hawaii and subsequently Earth just accepted the existence of aliens then? But apparently not. I don't know what the people think these things are, but when we meet Lilo's friends, in adverted commas again, they start bullying her because she lost her dog. In fact, I bet that's why your dog ran away. They still believe Stitch is a dog. Like, this is reaching new levels of cover-up. I was in acceptance of Pleakley's disguises, but this is where I draw the line. That's the line. I've drawn it. What do you think these things are? Just super well-trained dogs? Anyway, so the plot gets set into motion when the evil alien hamster mob lord approaches Jumbo about working with him again. And by approaches, I mean he threatens him by saying if he doesn't make a new experiment 626 for him to clone so he can take over the entire universe, he will kill him. Remember the plan from the last one? Exact same plan. You know, it's good to know that the justice systems in far more developed alien civilizations are just as awful at rehabilitating criminals as we are. So Jumbo creates a new Stitch, except he's red this time and called Leroy. Yep, that's the- yeah! We get a fun little Stitch versus Leroy fight and it looks like Stitch has won when Leroy gets sucked into a deadly turbine, but then he comes out completely fine. It's just shaved him somehow and then he grows the hair back so it doesn't even matter. I don't think that's how that would work. Then Pleakley shows up, Stitch loses, and they all end up getting captured. So the situation we end up having is an evil alien hamster mob lord is cloning a bunch of red Stitches, or Leroy's, I guess? While Stitch, Jumbo, and Pleakley are sent flying directly into a black hole. And Lilo can't exactly contact Stitch because she's on Earth, he's in space, and we haven't really perfected the art of communicating with aliens yet. And I was just here like, okay, well, we can end it there. The evil alien hamster mob lord takes over the world, and I can get an early night. But no, unfortunately, they couldn't let it be that simple and the plot convenience ensues. Firstly, Lilo goes out to find 625, and I guess they become best friends or something? I don't know, he's called Reuben now though, so yeah, just pretend that made sense. They call Stitch, but it's actually Leroy disguised as Stitch in his place. And Lilo works this out pretty much instantly because he isn't wearing some sort of Kiki necklace or something. So Ruben and Lilo formulate a plan and leave Earth to go save the day. And who would have guessed it? Experiment 625 was actually the one to save the day after all this. Not me, I'll tell you that, but it doesn't really matter because by the time they reach the Galactic Senate, the evil alien hamster mob lord has taken control and they get thrown in jail. Meanwhile, you have Stitch, Jumra, and Pleakley who managed to survive a black hole by throwing an Earth rock. At it? I don't know. It was a nice moment when Pleakley leaves Earth, Lilo gives him a bit of Earth Rock, and he's like, is this a real Earth Rock? Oh my god, that's so generous. But apparently, throwing it in this moment sets the wormhole off course, and I'm not saying this lightly here, but I think in the most mathematically convenient thing to ever happen in any movie ever, the wormhole reopens right next to Lilo, Ruben, and Gantu, who are escaping their prison cell. Oh yeah, did I mention Gantu's had a bit of a redemption arc and decides to save them, so... I guess we have to like him now, but more importantly, I'm pretty sure that's not how black holes work. And secondly, you're telling me the wormhole opens right where Lilo is? That is just the most convenient thing to ever happen, ever, like, and they just don't address it, oh my god. Then we finally reach the climax, where the evil alien hamster mob lord rounds up all of the experiments in some sort of American football field with the plan of killing them with all of his Leroy clones. Just as Lilo, Stitch, Jumba, Pleakley, Gantu, and Room, there's a lot of them now, all show up. Leading to an actually pretty cool team up fight between the experiments and the Leroy clones. Honestly, just like, this is the Avengers Endgame of Lilo and Stitch, and the Stitch Pokemon truly show their types. You got the ice type, the fire type, the water type, the. I don't even know what type that is, but it's a type. Only problem is the bad guys start winning quite comfortably, meaning the writers have to pull a bit of plot convenience out of the bag, as Jumbo reveals he put a shutdown button in all of the Leroy clones if they start singing Aloha-O by Elvis Presley. And therefore, 
they break into song. Everyone just starts performing a musical number and the Leroy's glitch out. If I was to have predicted how this film would end, it wouldn't have been that. And I don't know if that's a good thing, but it is, in fact, a thing. And you know what, in a nice, unexpected twist ending to this film, remember the bully girl? Well, it turns out her dog was a stitch experiment too, and they end up becoming friends. I think you can just about see them together at the end, you know, right there. So yeah, with that said, I'm gonna give this one a 5 out of 10. I know that's quite high and I've been ridiculously harsh, but to be fair, I've never seen the show. And I imagine for those who had, this was a pretty satisfying and fun finale. Not that anyone who watched this show would have got this far, because they probably smashed up their keyboard complaining that I complained about something that was explained in the show. And you know you know what? Go do that. Leave that mean comment and leave a like as well and subscribe to my channel, watch another video, check out my Patreon in the description down below and to try and give this video some sort of continuous storyline, let's go back to where it started. And there you have it. After that feast, the wild Seamus returns to hibernation. He will return. Probably some point next week because he uploads pretty much every week. You should subscribe, seriously.